can I assist you? I had to pick up some games. Okay. Okay, we've got some games reserved. Could you please confirm your full name and the first line of your address for confirmation? say about it really um it's from Naughty Dog who uh, made games like Uncharted and Crash Bandicoot and Jack and Daxter. Um I myself really love this game. It's a really good choice. I'm actually quite glad you picked this. Um obviously I don't need to tell you why you picked it, however um, I myself love it for so many reasons. Are you planning on picking up the DLC with this? And the sorts of types of DLC, there's uh, different maps for the multiplayer online and there is Left Behind, which is set in between the game um, in between several events of the game and its predecessing events I do recommend that Yeah, this is really good, quite I'm glad you picked this. Um, so, as you probably know, you follow Joel and Ellie. Yeah, and it's a post-apocalyptic horror game, I suppose. Um, horror and action-based game. And they're the two main protagonists. Yeah. Have you played any games from Naughty Dog before? Crash Bandicoot? Okay, so, obviously this runs a whole different stream of events. It is not exactly free world based, however the expanded land in it is so vast that um, you really do get a huge view of the world that you're living in, which really does immerse you into the gameplay. Yeah, so that's the first one you picked, yeah? What made you pick this? You are looking for a new horror game? Well, if I can recommend one, um, there will be one released in the uh, foreseeable future. I think it's called Silent Hill PT. Yeah, that's for the... That's for the PlayStation 4, I believe. And I do recommend that when it does come out. Yeah, they really played um, a whole different scene of events with Silent Hill this time. It really does take a different... Um, turn when it comes to especially technological advancements in equipment, especially this um, recent decade that we're in. Okay, so I believe this one is modern day or set very closely in the future. Um, you travel around all different parts of America with your sidekick, I suppose. Um, when it comes to AIs, typically you'll find that they're kind of useless or they don't connect with real human emotions, however um, I do find that this game does set some sort of a standard when it comes to AI not so much on the difficulties but as a general baseline um, it certainly does in my opinion I mean, I find that Ellie is quite useful in the game anyway, uh, let's see what else you picked oh, so you picked the the art book for the game, yeah? This is another good choice. Um, what you can see here is, there's no spoilers, um, it is a scene from the game itself where Ellie is helping Joel down here from a, I suppose, antagonist, but, you know, no one major. So I'll just quickly flick through the book with you. So, 
just shows you some basic imagery from the game. Can you see? Yeah? Okay. And it shows the development of the characters and what they were going to be and now what they have now become. Can you see how Joel has changed so vastly? Especially the uh, the attire they were going to give him, the clothing they were going to give him. All different types of equipment alterations. There are some other characters you will meet in the game. You'll also meet Tess, who's another um, friend of Joel's. You see? Nellie made some deep developments in the game as well. Yeah, she does look a little bit like Ellen Page. However, um, Ellen Page didn't play any role in the production and development of the game. Let's have a look. Yeah. And this art book really does entail you for the events that you will experience. The game itself um, introduces you to lots of um, really strong female leading characters in the game. Uh, for example, we have Marlene, who is the leader of the Fireflies. And we have Tess here. And the game itself is really good. And the, the game itself, I suppose, I believe is going to be made into a movie at some point. So, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I suppose if you play the game first, then you might have an idea. So in the events of the game, you also need to meet other characters to help you progress. And you meet Bill, who is quite a character in the game, very comical. He really does add a drop of humour to the game. And that's the thing with this game, um, it has very gripping plot development. It's quite a long game. On your first run through, you should take, I'm not sure how many hours, um, I believe there's somewhere between 14 to 20 hours of gameplay in one basic run through. Um, obviously, as you play the game more, it should take you less time, but certainly take your time with it on the first run through. You'll really appreciate um, your first experience with the game because you'll never be able to, you know, quite relive it the same. Yeah, such fine uh, details have gone into the graphics of this game. Um, even in the, you know, basic enemies. Which, um, I suppose a lot of people don't quite consider. But, um, there are some very beautiful scenes in this game. I won't uh, spoil them for you, but truly embrace every moment you're offered in this game because in my opinion, and my opinion only, it's quite a one-of-a-kind game. Um, this is Tommy, who's another character you'll meet um, a couple of times in the game, actually. And uh, Maria. And I'll let you find out who they are by yourself. And you go through another beautiful thing about this game is the seasons. You go through, I believe, every single season. Um, the winter season is my favourite. And with each season, it becomes more difficult to survive. And again, every detail with the snow itself is just beautifully crafted. So, not only are you terrified in this game, but you also in awe, I suppose, of the, just the beauty of it. So yeah, I'll let you 
can have a look at the rest yourself. But yes, this is up for the collection for this game, yes? Okay, brilliant. I'll just pop these to the side for you and I'll give them back to you at the end. solid HD collection yet. Yeah? Okay, have you played them before? No? Okay, well, um, would you like me to briefly take you through them? Okay, so, I believe the games are set somewhere between 1964 and they go all the way up to 2018. So the first one follows, uh, two main protagonists, um, which is Solid Snake and Raiden, I believe. The game is set, this one here, Sense of Liberty, is set in 2007, and there are several characters you will meet in this game, and lots of introductions. This game was highly acclaimed, I believe it was one of the um, most highly acclaimed games on the PlayStation 2. I believe this was the fourth highest rated PlayStation 2 game with an average score of 96%. So, Sons of Liberty introduces you to all sorts of characters. We have Raiden, Solid Snake, and you also meet Grey Fox, or, well, an imitation of Grey Fox, I believe, who is a cyborg ninja. You also meet Raiden. I suppose love interest or girlfriend at the time, Rose. And you'll meet people who help you take you through the game. And the series itself is strictly stealth like, you know, that's, that's how the game is supposed to be. And the game really opened up several doors for lots of different companies to take a pinch from it. Um, for example, the protagonists in these games are very unconventional and not something you would have seen at the time of release. I believe the first one was released roughly 2001, somewhere around there on the PlayStation. And basically in this one, you ride in a sent to a cleanup facility, which is an offshore facility called Big Shell. Um, I think he's also there to help save the president, who's up for ransom, from the Sons of Liberty. As you can see, the Sons of Liberty, I believe, are the main antagonists in the game. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, basically it's a stealth-operated game. Um, despite Metal Gear Solid being the second one in the series, um, there have been several games behind that one and in between the games and after. Okay. And I believe this one here sold roughly 7 million copies on the PlayStation, so it was quite a successful game. And as always, the games are made by Konami and Hideo Kojima Productions, who has a sort of development production company called Foxhound who are actually mentioned in the game briefly at points. Okay. So, the next one in the HD collection which you've decided to purchase is Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. This game, I believe, is set in the Civil War in 1964, I believe. And you play as Big Boss, who you see a few different times in the game series along with his predecessors and sequels, I suppose. The main antagonists in this game are Boss and Colonel Vulcan, who work for a sort of special forces unit and a crew facility, who you'll find out what they specialise in when you play the game. The this game also opens up to CQC, Close Quarter Combat, which I'm not sure has been um, shown in the others, but um, they do encourage that to be focused on very much so in this game. 
again, made by Hideo Kojima and his wonderful company. The game also ends some beautifully immersive scenes in the game, especially near the end. So the aim of this game is to rescue a defected, I suppose, Soviet scientist who is building a nuclear base tank called the Shagohot, and they need to, I suppose, bring him back to stop that being a world threat. And the game itself, also, you go against several different, I suppose, mini bosses in the game, who are also, again, part of a special forces unit. There's the End, who is a sniper specialist. There is the Fury, who is a fire specialist, I believe. There is the Sora, who is like a spirit medium, and there is the Pain and the Fear. And one is a Hornet specialist who uses insects as his way of attacking people, and the other is a very flexible and sturdy character who is very agile and, from my experience, difficult to attack. These bosses really do introduce a new type of game into the whole um, genre of stealth, I suppose. Um, each character has something special when it comes to techniques to defeat them. I think one boss in particular you might like is the end on this one. So the next one in the HD collection is the Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. This is, um, I believe the Six game, which was introduced on the PSP, and this one originally was released in 2010, and this also follows Big Boss in 1974, and it's set in Costa Rica, and this follows the events of two other games which came before it, one I've already mentioned. And basically, Big Boss in this one makes his own, I suppose, mini special forces unit. Um, I believe this one is a co-op game. I'm not too sure if it's a co-op for just the um, PSP or PlayStation. You're gonna have to find that out for yourself. Um, also, on this one here, um, for a sort of side mini game. Uh, you can also play, I suppose, like a mini Ape Escape version of the game. In the third one also you'll meet, again, lots of several characters. Um, Eva, who is, I suppose, Big Boss's love interest, and um, Ocelot, who, who considers himself a gun specialist. Um, but yeah, lots of different characters you'll meet in these games. They'll really invite you into a whole new fighting technique of gaming, really. Okay, said that. Okay, so, the next one you picked is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, and we'll just briefly go over this one. This game is the latest set game, and it's one of the newest releases. Uh, this game is set in 2018, and it follows Raiden again, who has now become a Cyborg Ninja, I suppose. And also, with this one, you do receive some free DLC to actually play as a Cyborg Ninja or Grey Fox, who obviously we briefly discussed before. You can use that as a separate costume if you decide not to wear the typical attire Raiden possesses in this game. It's totally your choice. This game um, is developed um, not just by Konami but also by a different company this time called Platinum Gaming. Um, whilst you may believe that a lot of series do give over their rights of development temporarily to other companies, they do sometimes fall flat on their face when it comes to graphic similarities, gameplay differences, and for some people this game is just a bit too different when it comes to gameplay. However, if you really like 
button bashing games, I suppose, then you should really like this, to be honest. Um, this has a great combination of button bashing for those who don't enjoy stealth, and they also have a great um, stealth section of the game, I suppose. You are encouraged to use stealth, however, um, considering the um, combo you can get in the game, it does imply that you're supposed to use button bashing um, techniques in order to win. Obviously, depending on the difficulty, you are supposed to use a higher level of stealth. Um, one thing you'll notice with the whole Metal Gear series, and this one, which is like a sub-game, is that um, you're encouraged to hide in barrels or boxes in order to hide away from your enemy. The soundtrack as well, um, made partially by, I believe, a guy called James Christopherson. Um, also, he really does introduce a whole new genre of music into the game. Whilst the other games were typically orchestral and classical, this game does step it up with um, metal notes and, I suppose, partially dubstep notes, which really does create a, I suppose, adrenaline rush for the player, and it really does immerse you into the fights. There are a few antagonists in the game. Um, there is a female antagonist called Mistral, or Mistral. Um, there's also one called Sundowner, and there is a another one called Sam, and and the main boss right at the end is called Armstrong. And uh, uh, good luck for that, uh, depending on what difficulty you're on. Uh, but yeah, basically, this game, um, the plot of it is Bryden works for a company now called Maverick, who encourage peace in the world and try to restore order. Um, after Raiden fails to protect a Prime Minister, um, he feels let down in himself. However, there is a outbreak of dominating power in the world and Raiden is then sent around the world to help restore order, basically. And Raiden then works with a lot of different characters in the game. Um, typically, he works for a lot of Russians in the game. Um, lots of different antagonists in the game, but one pure, obviously one pure protagonist. This game is not multiplayer. However, it does come with so much DLC to try out. There's also a DLC for some of the antagonists, which you can look into a bit of their history and their background, and really actually fall in love with some of the antagonists when it comes to their um, background history and personality. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this one. The last one you appear to have chosen is the Devil May Cry series. This one is made by Capcom, who, as you know, create the Resident Evil series. Have you played these before? Do you have? Okay, so then I don't need to go into um, too much detail with them. Obviously, you play as Dante in the first three, and they go in such a strange chronological order. Um, I believe if we're going in age, there is three, then one. Then it's Devil May Cry 4, then it's Devil May Cry 2. Um, do you have a favourite from the series? 1 and 3? Yeah, that tends to be quite a lot of people's favourites in the game. Um, but yeah, this game originally was supposed to be, um, I suppose like a cut-off from Resident Evil, or the Resident Evil series actually. But they decided to divide the games and work off them separately. I suppose if you do look at Dante, the main protagonist in this game, quite in detail, you'll notice that he does have some similarities from Leon S. Kennedy from the Resident Evil series. So, yeah, obviously not a lot to say about these if you already know about them. 
um, the son of Sparta, who is kind of like a, I suppose, kind of like the upkeeper of hell, possibly. Um, and obviously there's lots of different um, expansions which arise off this. For example, the new DMC. Um, whilst a lot of people believe DMC actually came from the beginning of the series, is actually set in an alternative universe. So, um, would you be interested in picking up that one? No? Well, you've obviously got a lot of games to play here anyway. Um, but yeah, I really do hope that you enjoy these games. Um, okay, so, there's not all I can say. Okay then, so that's the Devil May Cry series. Do you own number four? one's quite an interesting game too, the fact that the main protagonist alter alternates in this one. Um, is it Tenero? Yeah? Okay. So let me just take a confirmation of all the games you purchased. Okay, so if I'm correct, you've picked up the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. You've picked up The Last of Us with the art book. And you've picked up Metal Gear Rising and Devil May Cry HD collection. Okay. Well, I know that I've kept you a long time, but are you interested in picking up perhaps a PlayStation Network card from us? No? Okay. Well, I was just going to say, in case you wanted to get the DLC, I mean, you can always come back to us if you're interested in picking up the DLC for any of the games. Okay, well, let me just write off your order number. Okay, that's brilliant. So all the games are brand new and unused. If you do have any problems with them, we do have a 30 day money back guarantee. Okay. Okay, you have a lovely day now. And I'll just pass these to you. Okay, excellent. You have a lovely day now and hopefully we should see you very soon. Of course, yeah. Enjoy the games.